ArcGIS Explorer is a fantastic tool for not only visualizing information, but for making decisions and sharing those decisions with others. In this demonstration, we will leverage ArcGIS Server to address a severe weather event that has recently occurred. Here we are looking at the current precipitation radar for the continental United States, and we can see it is a busy weather day here in the United States. This is a live feed that is automatically updated every 15 minutes and is displayed in ArcGIS Explorer. This is an example of displaying dynamic server-based content in ArcGIS Explorer. But I'd like to add some, some content of my own, and to do so, I am going to visit the National Weather Service's Storm Prediction Center. Here we can download the current and historical significant weather events that have happened across the United States. I recently downloaded a tornadic event that occurred in Houston, so let's add this event to ArcGIS Explorer. And to add this text file, we'll go to the Tools menu, Import File, Import our NOAA file, and here is the wizard that walks us through setting up our text file. So I'm going to choose a symbol here and go about my way. So here is a tornado touchdown that occurred and was reported directly to NOAA. By clicking on this event, we can uh, view the comments that were reported directly to the National Weather Service. Thankfully, no one was hurt in this tractor-trailer incident, but what if something had happened? I will now walk you through a series of events using ArcGIS Explorer as a decision-making uh, and communication tool. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to send this tornadic event to a geoprocessing service. So we're going to simulate that this was uh, an 18-wheeler that was carrying some uh, dangerous cargo. In this case, there was fertilizer. So we're going to choose anhydrous ammonia. The wind speed and the wind direction is pretty constant in that, coming out of 325. And I'm going to run. Now we're, our results are generated and displayed on the map. And what we see is a red square. And let me explain what that red, red square means. I'm going to change some of the properties of it, give it a little bit of a transparent value. Okay, now this, this red square that we see on the map is the initial containment zone for this particular chemical incident. It is generated following the published emergency response guidelines, and it varies depending on uh, the attributes that you choose, such as the chemical or the conditions, day or night, um, etc. So this is our initial containment zone for this uh, particular spill. I need to establish a safe area uh, and that means keeping people out of a potentially dangerous situation. So I'll now send the containment zone to a roadblock task that was authored uh, in ArcGIS Desktop using the Network Analyst extension. So the results from this task are going to be locations in which I need to place roadblocks. So I'm going to execute this task and hit run. So we can see right here our task right now is executing. It's going out to our ArcGIS server that is hosting this geoprocessing model and it is now returning a result to us. So I will zoom in to my map. Let me turn off again some of these. I'll zoom into my map and we will see kind of in a 3D perspective the locations of these roadblocks um, that will quarantine this area and keep the public safe. So when responding to emergencies of this scale, communication is absolutely critical. Uh, we need to know as much information as we can about the affected area. Do we need translators, help moving the young or elderly? To answer this, I'll execute one last server-based task, generating a detailed demographic profile. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to tilt this back up and I'm going to send our containment zone out to a business analyst online task. So I'm going to grab this task here. This is a subscription-based task. So uh, there's some free ones we can see here, but there's also some reports that are not free. So I'm going to get a graphic profile, and it's going to ask me for my username and password. 
Next, I'm going to log into this subscription-based service. And I'm going to draw a polygon around our containment zone. I'm not interested in the entire demographic of Houston or this census block, just the area that is affected by this containment zone. So I've executed this task. I'm going to go ahead and buy this report. So again, this is going out to an ArcGIS server service. And we can see that this is executing in my results panel. It's going out to that server. It's querying just the area, just the demographics for the polygon that I selected. And the uh, result of that is a PDF document. And I'll open that now. And in this PDF document that we chose, um, we can see the number of households and some of the breakdown demographics, population by age, race, etc. So this could be uh, very important in properly responding to this situation. So what I'd like to do now, uh, we've just executed three decision-making layers of information in ArcGIS Explorer. It's very easy to share this information with others uh, that are using ArcGIS Explorer. So any of the results I have generated can be sent via email by right-clicking and choosing the email option. So I'm going to send my roadblocks out. I just right-click and I choose the email option. This is going to fire up your email client. And all the user on the other end needs to do is double click the attachment or the email that they receive to automatically open up their ArcGIS Explorer session. So up to this point uh, in our workflow, we've relied on ArcGIS services to handle much of our work. Let's take a look at how other content types can be used in ArcGIS Explorer. So I'm going to turn off some of the layers here. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to go to the Help menu, and I'm going to go to the ArcGIS Explorer Resource Center. There are a number of tasks available for download from the ArcGIS Resource Center. Let's grab the Add Photo task to upload geotagged photos that have been taken of the tornado affected area. So I'm going to grab, browse my way to the task panel. And here, here's actually the Business Reports task that I just ran is available for you to download as well. So I'm going to grab the Add Photo task. It automatically adds it to my ArcGIS Explorer session. So what I'm going to do is click on it. And I'm going to add some photos that were geotagged at the time of their capture. And we're going to be able to see the location and the photos in which were taken. So I'm going to browse to my photo directory. And here are some photos that were taken from folks in the field, and I'm going to place these photos. So I have just placed geotagged photos right here in ArcGIS Explorer in the path of this tornado. So if I were to select one of these camera shots, we will see a picture in which some damage was taken and uh, had coordinate information assigned to it. So in an event like this, many agencies would be working together to ensure the safety of the community. The work that GIS analysts perform must get to the decision makers as quickly and efficiently as possible. One method of achieving this is by uh, using a centralized view that everyone can see. So from this simplified view that I have, I'm going to pull this up, my quick content panel. And I'm going to go ahead and close out the console just to free up some ArcGIS Explorer space. So here we have this quick content panel, which is a centralized view in which everyone can see incidences that have been reported. So for example, I've got a hot tab, a maps tab, and a GIS tab. Now on my hot tab, I've got a tractor trailer explosion, NOAA severe weather, and a demographic profile. These are the most recent activity or most recent recent actions that have occurred and everyone can see this through this response action center so this is a uh, if you will a common portal for all uh, decision makers in which to look at information if i click on the maps tab i have different uh, base map information that i can display so if i want to switch out my imagery for a uh, street map I can click here and instantly, just by clicking on the button, I can 